Mandalorian, Empire Strikes Back, A New Hope, Force Awakens, and Return of the Jedi, and The Last Jedi. If any of these titles ring a bell, if so, then probably are possibly a Star Wars fan. If you got, if you enjoy gaming besides merely just watching the movies, you will be glad to know that the franchise has been a creative fuel for some of the best video games over the years, with the best Star Wars games being the most exemplary of the bunch. If you guys know me at all, I am a huge Star Wars fan, and I, and really some of the best times growing up was not only watching the movies but playing these said games. And my first exposure to the franchise was just playing games in general. And well, these are just some of my favorite childhood memories growing up. And so since it's National Star Wars Day today, I thought I'd go and go back and take a look at my top favorite Star Wars games. I mean, after all, I own every single one. Also, a small disclaimer, I love all these games for what they are. So these ranks I assign, numbers, whatnot, uh, they're, just list they're just for listing purposes and not ranking. Now before I get started, I want to ask you guys to consider, consider subscribing and joining the notification squad. Leaving a comment, I want to know what your favorite Star Wars game is and why. Also, if any of the games I covered today, and if you guys are interested, I'd like to do a Let's Play series on one of the specific games even on this list or ones you guys suggest. So I'm down to feature your comment in the next video. Also, I highly recommend checking out my other channels and my social media platform. I'm talking about Instagram, Twitter, and of course my other YouTube channels. I'm going to be releasing a bunch of Star Wars related content today and all this week. For example, I'm building a few props from the movie and the franchise on my personal channel. So if you guys are interested in that, you can check that out. Also, I got a small mini short, that VFX short that I'm working on as well for my movie channel. Anyways, without further ado, let, let's basically get started with this list. Looks like that droid was the vein. So number one is starting a little bit lower on my list, but it's one of the games that I cherish mostly since it's one of the games that I grew up around and for the longest time it was what was the filler gap for Star Wars before the sequel trilogy came out came along and that's Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I still remember playing this game, the crap out of this game on the PS2, PSP and even on now that I have it on PC and PS3. It was such an interesting thing to look back at. Granted the story is probably can be considered to what I think is probably the worst story in any gaming. It was just basically just like kind of like a, a what if scenario, but also kind of feels like a eight year old wrote the story. I mean, you play as Darth Vader's secret apprentice that takes place between episode three to episode four with all these nonsensical things about the force powers and basically breaking the whole entire Star Wars canon, in my opinion. And also it's been a little bit tiring to hear people argue that, man, I wish this was canon. I wish this was blah, blah, this and that. But that's probably a gripe for another day. I don't think it should be. I think it just ruins what George was going for initially with the Star Wars movies and the lore and the faction. But it's just so fun to have such a nonsensical view of Star Wars and just go crazy. And like the title suggests, it's Force Unleashed. I know there's a sequel to this game, but the first game and the opening scene where you play as Darth Vader still sticks to me to this day. And it was it came out back when the games were basically, uh, when you had the titles of, uh, of switching between the 8th gen and 9th gen of gaming. So you had different versions of the game on the PlayStation 2 and the Sony PSP, or if you're playing on Wii, or of course on the 9th gen consoles like PC. And of course there were the awesome DLCs where it took the what if approach that if if Darth Vader died and Starkiller took the mantle and if Luke Skywalker returned to the dark side, if you killed Darth <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi by throwing him through Millennium Falcon. Oh, just it was just nonsensical and weird, but I really enjoyed the game for what it was. For it story-wise, probably not, but for what it was, it's still some of the effects and some of the physics of the game like throwing enemies and stormtroopers and then watching them struggle as you lift them up with the force and they're trying to grab on for their their life like just something about the game has such a charm and a lot of those it was basically i think in my opinion was just a glorified tech demo but it was interesting nonetheless to see this kind of game come out and this was before the disney acquisition and honestly i think i don't have a bad opinion about the disney acquisition but i do like the games for what it is nevertheless let's move on to the next game now, Lego Star Wars, this game was literally the reason why I got into Star Wars from a young age. When you're a little boy at eight years old and they finally announced the first Star Wars game, Lego Star Wars game in the Lego magazine 
that you subscribed to from your first Lego box. If you guys remember Lego Magazine, <laughs> uh, that's how old I am. I'm barely in my 20s and I'm still feeling so nostalgic about that. But Legos and Star Wars coming together has always been one thing. It, the games have always had this funny uh, tongue-in-cheek kind of thing before the very first Lego game that they made, uh, I believe Traveler's Tale, was just interesting because it was they had no dialogue like it is today with newer uh, Star Wars games. Uh, sorry, newer Lego games. And it was all tongue-in-cheek. It was like kind of watching a mime pantomime, and it was very much comedic value, very much friendly. Uh, the controls were simple. To, I think narrowed down to only five buttons, and I, but I still did struggle because I would be playing the original Lego Star Wars game using my arrow keys on my keyboard, and yeah, that's how back then we used to play. Now I have a gamepad to enjoy these games, and right now I have gameplay of the complete saga playing in the background. That's both the uh, sequel and prequel trilogy. Sorry, the original trilogy and the sequel uh, and its sequel trilogy playing next to ne next to each other back to back prequel and original my bad i'm just so excited about these games and growing up lego star wars was just an apple of my eye i had the original one for pc i still to this day have both the discs for um for lego star wars episodes one through three and also the original trilogy which i played the crap ton on my sony psp and i still have the box for now these games were obviously geared towards a younger audience but nevertheless it was just fun to w watch and play these games and I have nothing but great love for them because you know which boy didn't grow up play playing Legos with Legos and also having the charm of Star Wars add into the mix just makes such a great mix for it anyways moving on to the next game Star Wars Jedi Knight now I was gonna put Star Wars Jedi Knight fall in order but I believe that game is really new and also really unique and doesn't and one of my favorite games but also it took a lot of inspiration from this game alone. Now, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi 2, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, that is a mouthful to say, is a game that's a sequel to the original Dark Forces games that ran on the id Tech engine and also had its sequel. And it was interesting because those games were old. And then, like, this game comes in and continues the story of Kyle Katarn, who is a stormtrooper, force sensitive stormtrooper turned rebe re rebel who originally. This who originally saved and recovered the original Death Star plans, which is, of course, this is all legends now, and uh, it's not lore-wise now that Star Wars Rogue One is out. And that, Rogue One is a great movie, after all, but I also enjoyed Kyle Katarn's storyline, considering that he went from being from the Empire side to going for rebel, becoming a rebel and then becoming a full Jedi Knight. And Jedi Knight, Jedi, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast had this amazing good balance between being a first person shooter and then also having these very intricate lightsaber move sets and being able to fight amazing lightsaber combat kind of things you can run across the wall you can do backflips you can and the the way the controls they were pretty intuitive in my opinion the way you would move in direction and the way you would have timer hit boxes and duel it was just i don't think nothing has come close closest thing today is jedi knight jedi a uh, jedi Jedi Fallen Academy, but that was kind of more of like a Sekiro and Dark Souls type of video game, so uh, parrying and everything. But this one was more like hitbox based, so it was really interesting to see. Also, this game had dismemberment, and the physics was interesting. Granted, it's, it hasn't aged well, like most of the games on this list, they're not going to age well, but it's still one of the, my favorite games, and I really want to go back and play more of it. Now, moving on to number four. Star Wars Battlefront. Regardless of what format it was, Star Wars Battlefront has always been an apple of my eye. I remember playing the original 2005 one on my Sony PSP. I played so many hours of it to the point where I think I, my, I was like one rank 150. That didn't mean anything, but on the Sony PSP, it was just amazing to play this game and how well it worked. And then, of course, there was the subsequent spin-offs, and then, of course, the, the light reboot that EA did. And honestly, I know it's polarizing that many people didn't like it for its lack of story content or anything like that. Meanwhile, the, the PSP spin-off, uh, Elite Squadron, had a full story content. But granted that, if you guys recall uh, or had kept up with any of the Star Wars Battlefront uh, news, Battlefront 3's story was basically copied and pasted into that game. And I was so impressed by that that game having 
space to ground combat. Unfortunately, EA's game didn't have that, but it slowly subsequently grew. It got its own story mode, and uh, Battlefront uh, uh, Battlefront's reboot, I can't remember when it came out, 2015? I can't, gosh, I can't remember, but it was just so beautiful to look at, but also the uh, downside was that it only focused on uh, the original trilogy materials, though uh, the DLCs, the subsequent four DLCs that came out really made the game look really nice, and then Star Wars Battlefront 2 came out with the story campaign added in Bergio, and it had all three eras of Star Wars full of content, and I feel like Compared to its launch, it had done a 180, 100% 180, and really brought this game in. Also, it's just one of the most gorgeous looking multiplayer games to look at, both the reboot and the, the its sequel. Uh, it's just amazing to look at, and I just love Star Wars Battlefront because you can be basically a grunt. You can It's basically the poor man's battlefield, let's keep it there, and you guys know how much I love battlefield. But honestly, it came into its own, and I really appreciate Star Wars Battlefront. Hopefully, EA, uh, many people are tout EA as the bad guy and you know I agree their business practices aren't the best but you know they do make some pretty all right games and I feel like the EA Star Wars titles just got stronger and stronger as they went nevertheless we're gonna move on to the fifth and final game and this might surprise you so this one is kind of like a personal favorite of mine because I own the original disc for and I've played it on every single platform and for but it's one of the most nightmarish games to get running on PC because it's just not supported at all, even on the Steam page and the, if you have it on GOG.com. And that's Star Wars Republic Commando. Why do I like this game? It's just, it just feels like something else. If you guys enjoyed Star Wars The Clone Wars and if you enjoyed the clones in general, this game was the first attempt to humanize the clones and not make them as a faceless grunt. And I really liked and appreciated how tonally it was different. The game didn't start with the opening crawl. It just started with you being born, literally. And you're just being told that you're you're the leader of this elite squon, clone squadron. And you feel that. There's this amazing squad tactical gameplay movement. The shooting has surprisingly stood up its age. Of course, the, uh, visually the game hasn't. And I have it running here in the background with a couple of patches, uh, Frankenstein package, packages and patches trying to get the game running. Hope, I'm pretty sure there's some mods out there to make it look good and work well with the FOV settings that I have because, you know, games back then did not care about FOV at all. And you guys know me that I really like my FOV. Nevertheless, Star Wars, Star Wars Republic Commando was just amazing. It was totally different. It was dark. I love how small details, like if you meleeed a droid and you can or droid or a Geonosian or an alien and you'd see this residue fall on the visor and the visor was such a great part of the immersion because it looked, made you feel like you're looking through a clone trooper's elite clone trooper's helmet and then there's night vision it just basically felt like Halo slash Call of Duty and just tonally it was just so different and I really wish that there'd be another first person shooter Star Wars game like it coming out because there's not a lot in it in it and it's surprising that it was rated T uh, for this material but also the storytelling was great and also the cliffhanger ending was just something else nevertheless that pretty much brings us to the end of my list I really I'm sure I missed a million other games and I now that I'm looking at at it I, I'm regretting not including a bunch of them, and maybe I'll do an upload, updated list next year or in the future. And I want to know from you guys, what's your favorite Star Wars game? Leave a comment below. And if you want to see me do a playthrough of any of the games or in, in any games, I have every single one, honestly. I'm down to do it. I, I'd love to start covering more older games on this channel. Nevertheless, it means a lot that you guys tuned in this far. I know I spoke for a while. And it means that you guys just stuck around. I'm just spitballing at this point, but this channel's growing slowly, and I appreciate the views that we get and the subscribers that we're, we're mounting to so far. Nevertheless, this is Shari Mustafiz. May the Force be with you, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.